I was a young kid and I could see that there was people that didn't like change, masters of our trade. And as things progressed and as new things came available, I, I was very hungry to learn those things. And I was fortunate to be in an environment to learn. Hello, welcome to Zero Tolerance, located in uh, Clint Township, Michigan. Uh, my name is Steve Michon. Um, I'm the owner and uh, we started this company in 2011 and we do everything here in-house uh, from part design, mold design, product development, all the way to end result uh, of consumer products. And uh, we're going to walk you through a, a day of uh, all the things that are involved in doing that. So here at Zero Tolerance we design and build injection molds. Uh, our services are, are e sinker EDM burning, mold design, 5-axis machining, injection molding, 3D printing, CNC programming and fixturing, uh, spotting and benching, and we also have uh, fast hole and wire EDM. Uh, one of the neatest things recently that we've been working on is a shift lever for Ford. Uh, it is a, a, an over-molded steel rod on a nylon-based plastic. So we're, we've designed and built the mold. Uh, some of the interesting parts about building molds is the intricacy of how they work. Uh, when you think of a mold, most people see two halves come together and then the part comes out. Well, internally, when you have uh, undercuts or features that ha can't be pulled out in a certain direction, uh, where there's a lot of mechanics and engineering that goes into that design, and we do that here. Uh, what differentiates Zero Tolerance from other shops is our ability to make changes on the fly. Um, we're very versatile. We learn the new softwares. We try to implement everything we can. So we're taking advantage of software, tools, and fixturing to be more competitive, uh, provide better pricing for our customers, better lead times, and um, trying to gain more profit as we grow. Uh, our fixturing is really key to what we do here. Um, most people are familiar with AROA and 3R type fixturing and we utilize those along with uh, we sell aftermarkets using Sunspot uh, tooling and we take advantage of everything that they're capable of. Well here we're at the wire EDM machine. So what happens with this machine is uh, it utilizes a 10,000 brass wire and it controls an electric voltage um, specific for different thicknesses of material to wire or to EDM or electronically displace the metal in a certain path, as you can see on the screen here. And it will make very precision cuts using electricity. And it's, just, it's a submerged tank, so it's underwater. It's dielectric. Fluid is what it's called, so it's basically deionized water. Uh, this gives us a huge advantage for making very accurate parts uh, with very little effort. Part of the advantage that we utilize Sunspot for is the, the fixturing and holding of our workpiece, where we can, it's a modular system, and we can take it on and off with very little effort and extreme accuracy. So using the, it's a 3R style holder, uh, we're able to do a lot of different fixtures and setups quickly and easily and repeatedly. So um, I highly recommend these types of fixtures for, for everybody's shop. They work well and we utilize both Aroa and 3R. Uh, uh, they're in a lot of shops that way now today, but the, the Sunspot's aftermarket version is, is just as good. and we've been using it for years. All right, I'm gonna dive into one of the molds that we had here that's a pretty good challenge for us, um, in which we do accelerate at. Uh, we have a two cavity tool. It is the same hand, it's not a right and left. It's got two hydraulic uh, cylinders that drive two of the slides, and it has a certain pattern of, of closing that has to happen in order to create all the features on the part. Uh, this particular part is is an interesting one. It, it's it's a handgun, um, and it's got a lot of internal action to it. Our design in the CAD allows us to prove out all of our thoughts before we put them into steel. 
allowing us to put um, slide details where they can go, uh, make the design robust, and give uh, the parts nice clean shutoffs. They're, um, it's well designed. We've got a lot of experience um, in designing and a history of, of building really, really nice molds. This, this particular part has a very interesting gate. The injection point where the plastic enters the part had to be in a specific spot that the customer requested, and it was a challenge to get it in that spot. Uh, we were able to achieve that. It's a valve-gated hot manifold, and um, you cannot physically see where that is happening on this part, and the customer is very happy about that. All right, we are now at our five-axis machine, our Makino. Makino is known for very high accuracy, um, and we're our name is zero tolerance, so we try and shoot for for zero on most of our most of our tooling. Um, we've leaned on a lot of our skill as toolmakers to overcome tolerance issues in the past with older machines, and with the newer machines, we're able to hit numbers like we've never had before. And now with five axis in our shop, we're able to do a lot more work with many. Uh, saved hours with setups and times. Here's one of the items we've done on this machine. It is uh, hand loads that don't have any true square edges on them. And these were programmed and machined here using the Sunspot tools, Symmetron, and the five axis Makino. And we will use our wire EDM to slice these parts off of this holder. And it'll give us a part that's 100% done for the prototype mold. So as you can see behind me, I'm machining uh, the last piece of a hand load for a mold that we're gonna be um, finishing up here next week. It's making a complicated part, starting from a raw block, like so. And in one setup, we're gonna be able to get all of the details machined onto that block. Here we're at our Eagle EDM uh, burning a a part shape into a cavity block for a Ford uh, uh, F-Series component for the steering column. Uh, we have our electrode, uh, very small details, uh, putting these features into the steel using uh, EDM technology. Using this new technology, we, we went from use, making three electrodes, which takes more time when you see and see them, to using, we can get down to one electrode which burns faster, we can cut it faster, and it's, it's extremely efficient for us. Okay, here we have our electrode cutting CNC. The way we cut electrodes is designed to increase our throughput efficiency and accuracy. What we do is we group uh, multi-stations together and a whole library of tools. This allows programming to be simplified, set up to be simplified, and the whole process then is, is much quicker and more efficient with less errors, allowing our customers to have a better benefit for uh, complex geometry and the end result. Here's our 3D printer, it's a Mark Forge. Uh, came to us through a diamond project um, to be part of a network of 3D printers across Michigan. Uh, we're using it in our shop for prototyping, uh, fixturing, and actual useful tools. It's an industrial grade uh, printer. It uses a plastic material mixed with, it's called Onyx. It has a carbon fiber um, base to it, so it's extremely strong. And we've been able to utilize it for uh, proving out concepts for the shop, improving our injection molding process. What I like about having this printer here is the ability to make, take an idea, draw it really quickly and have it print and have it the next day. I, I can literally test components, test fixturing, test the tools out before we uh, make, make a, spend a lot of time on it. So it's, it's very useful in the shop. Um, it's hard to get that mindset of being able to do and utilize a new tool like this because it's new. Uh, most people don't like to change. We like to change around here. so we're we're always uh, looking to make something better. Uh, we came up with a, a fixture 
or a loading system. Uh, instead of end of arm tooling, we do it manually. Uh, we were able to iterate different styles of fingers and we came up with a tool that we use every day uh, for loading eight inserts into an injection mold. Now we're at our molding press where we've, we've um, developed our claw, we call it, for loading inserts with through the Diamond Project and uh, Automation Alley. Um, we have been become way more efficient with this, with this tool. Initially it was designed simply to insert these parts, um, all eight of them at one time, but we found out there's a lot more benefits to it. Um, it's a safety feature, the tool's running 275 degrees, so the operator is safer. Um, it also gives the operator something to do while the machine is in process, so there is a very little waste of time and our customers are, have been in trouble with timing on multiple occasions and we've been able to solve that problem for them and for us in the process. Uh, we came up with the idea for an end of arm tooling for uh, putting a real robot in place for this project. Uh, the budgets weren't um, going to work out for that, it was going to be over $100,000. Uh, we uh, were looking at doing, a, we had it actually all designed in CAD and we ended up finding a, a way to make it handheld to start off and if the project continues then we could invest in the future and, and buy a robot eventually but in the meantime we were looking to increase our productivity um, make this more efficient and have a more consistent cycle when you're molding and this uh, 3d printer and our design team allowed that to happen here Uh, the biggest thing I see with all the technology that there is, uh, zero tolerance is the people that are here make zero tolerance what it is. I feel that uh, we are going to be focusing on making an environment to bring in new people into the industry of manufacturing. Uh, I, I've seen a lot of it go away and I'm, our mission here is to bring it back. When I got started in this trade it was it was, I was learning from someone, a, a master, had 30 years experience. I was a young kid and I could see that there was people that didn't like change. Um, masters of our trade and as things progressed and as new things came available, I, I was very hungry to learn those things and I was fortunate to be in an environment to learn. Uh, one of the good things about the social media is the community that is um, is out there the the machine shop world uh, machining and EDM and mold making uh, the this industry is a small small group of people highly skilled and it is interesting that the problems you're having someone else is having those too and there's there's a lot of solutions out there and with if the borders are down and people can share this country can grow and and our and our industry continues to get better our company has been posting um, our, our media for quite a while, couple, probably four or five years now. And uh, the reason that we're even on this, on this video today is for Practical Machinists saw something that we had posted and, and they shared it. And it, it just becomes a, large, a part of the larger community. And it's a benefit to, to many shops. Um, I started off really small, um, living in the basement of my parents' house. and ended up buying a machine for my tax return <laughs> and I took like three months to rebuild it and it was a Fidel. Everybody knows what a Fidel is. We, we, uh, we got it working and, and I started my shop, wrote down a bunch of goals and 10 years later I've, I've pretty much achieved those goals with, with new ones uh, as I go. So it, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of opportunity today, more than you think. You can find zero tolerance on LinkedIn, Instagram, uh, Facebook, and those are our, our uh, social media outlets, that we, and also our, our website, obviously. Uh, social media seems to be a, a very powerful tool from what we've found. We have uh, posted um, 
our work and, and more, more uh, information about what we do, and we've seen a lot of traction from it. It's a, it's, it's, it's a very powerful tool. Everyone's looking at their phones today, and I think that um, it's overlooked as a way to grow your business. I just want to wrap up our, our uh, walkthrough today um, and talk about really the most important part about our whole company, and that's the people that are here. The team that we built, how much they care, uh, it, it's about relationships with our team and with our customers. Without that relationship and the, the people, there's really no company. It's, it's not me, it's, it's them. And uh, uh, are highly, we're blessed and highly favored, I'll tell you that. And God bless America.